Hi everybody, King Church Hunter here. Today we're talking about today's urban gold rush, modern day gold rush. We're not talking about going up the river, 500 mile, miles in the bush or nothing like that. We're talking about modern day gold rush. Today's household golds have lots of uh, platinum, different types of metals like silver, platinum, gold. Uh, most electronics have gold plated pins, fingers, and uh, computer boards where they join. Um, all sorts of uh, really good metals that can be easily uh, easily separated by chemicals or electrolysis process. You got uh, fuse box breakers. They got small little um, little areas where you have uh, where the contact points are. They made out of silver, up to ninety percent silver. So the bigger the bigger the breaker, the higher the amperage is, the more silver content. If you get a standard uh, uh, 15 amp breaker, a single breaker, it's going to be very tiny, like the size of a BB. If you get something industrial power, it could be size of uh, a nickel, and that will be your silver contact. And usually there's two contacts in these breakers. What you got to do is either drill them out, or you have to actually smash them apart. That's one way. Or you can go... If you're looking for silver, you could also go into uh, computer keyboards. They have polymer with uh, silver trace. All that silver trace on the polymer is all can be all refined uh, in in the products to bring back silver. Also, I'd like to mention um, there's so much gold in the computer e-waste. Not so much new stuff, but there still is a fair amount. Older the computer components are, the more gold. So if you, I'll show you examples later of uh, different gold items. I'll show you catalytic converters. If you have a bunch of beater cars on your property and you actually want to uh, scrap them, they're not worth any value, you can cut out the catalytic converter. If you cut the catalytic converter out, you can get anywhere from $30 to $350, depending on what, what make, what style, if it's a foreign car, how big it is, how concentrate the material is. Some vehicles... The mission standards in different states and countries are very strict, so they use more platinum, rhodium, gold, and other precious metals in there that can be refined. So your best bet is I'll show you some examples, I'll show you some still pictures. You can just cut them off yourself with a sawzall. Make sure you brace, uh, jack your car up, brace it really good. Then you can end up cutting it off with a sawzall. Go look in the yellow pages, talk to different uh, dealers that buy these products. You can give them the code number. Every catalytic converter has a code number. So you, you give them the code number or type it on the internet. We'll tell you roughly what it's worth buying, buying and selling. Also, uh, uh, you can take your, uh, you know, if you go into your home and you have uh, silver plated material like silver knives and forks that are plated, you can still do electrolysis, acid, you can still... Uh, refine the silver you might get a small amount like two or three or four grams or five grams of pure silver off each fork fork or spoon but you start adding up you know dozens dozens of forks and spoons and do adds up to quite a bit of silver so these are ways of refining through acid electrolysis also like I say if you get into computers uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of gold especially if you get uh, Servers, data servers, and in, in hard drives. There's a lot of pins. There's uh, the motherboards. The IC chips too have uh, have gold in them. Also, they're not high amounts of gold. They got to be refined. But uh, if you have a large amount, if you have kilos and kilos of this material, it will end up being gold, right? Once you refine it, you could uh, turn it to a nice nugget, a little gold uh, nugget there. Yeah, I'll show you all the different materials you can uh, extract gold from anywhere from uh, silver plated jewelry, silver plated knives and forks, all the way down to gold plated items. If you have a large amount of gold plated items or silver plated items, you can refine the silver material, the plating. If you have a large quantity, that plating can be uh, recovered. You know, might not get a lot, but through large volumes, it sure adds up fast. And also, all this type of e-waste, we're constantly like throwing away, we're constantly recycling it, but there's a lot of precious metals in this material. So if you take a lot of this material by volume and start processing, you'd be very amazed how much gold and silver 
can be recovered. I'll show you later uh, examples of material. I'll so show you some still pictures of different materials. I'll show you uh, the breaker box, the breakers itself from a fuse box. Uh, what we do is um, all you have to do is what most people might do is uh, instead of drilling them out because you have little rivets in there you can unscrew them you can wrap it up in a cloth a little towel and you can break it apart with a hammer you only have to swing it a couple times and uh, the material in there is not a lot but if you have large amounts we're talking about older breakers a lot of times uh, the contact point and even assembly point could be 90 percent silver so if you over time you can collect all this material and you get it all refined and you can have pure silver basically just scrap stuff people throw away I've done demos for the last 20 years never collected none of this stuff and we tore houses down with tons of breakers tons of material which we should have uh, if we knew, knew a little more uh, we've been watching a lot of YouTube there's a lot of information on YouTube if you want to learn a little more they show refining processes they show all the different uh, tricks of the trade on how to recover stuff efficiently, safely, and properly. But uh, while, what I'll do is we'll show you, you know, the insides of the breaker components, and then how to how to figure out the test. You can test with acids. Uh, a lot of times you can use a file. If you use a file, it will tell you if it's a copper based or it's plated or if it's a pure silver. So I'll show you that. I'll show you some uh, motherboards. I'll show you some RAM cards. Uh, ICs basically uh, you can do the research on the internet just do some more researches refine what you're doing and what you want to do um, because all this high-end products anything high-end has a lot of a uh, lot of contacts in their gold-plated contacts not much if you have one item but if you have multiples and multiples or pounds of this material you can have pure gold waiting to be discovered and refined okay here's an f-350 ford gasoline that's a kinetic converter right there in the front usually comes right off the mortar it's your biggest thing uh this one here is probably worth at least 150 dollars minimum these uh things contain a honeycomb substance material in there either rhodium or platinum or even some gold could be in there it could be a few grams of platinum in there depending on the size that determines the value so if you're scrapping a vehicle say you have a car that you want to take to a scrapyard don't forget to cut the catalytic converter off that's your best bet to bring you extra cash look in the yellow pages look under the internet on buyers of catalytic converters so that's a Ford I'll show you a, a Chrysler here's in a second. Uh, the Dodge minivan here's a catalytic converter right there this one's a long tube version. Uh, this one could get you around 80 bucks or more, depending on how refined the materials are, the emissions and so on. Every state, every province has different standards emissions. So some of these catalytic converters could have more, more things in there that are worth more money. More platinum, could be more rhodium, depending on every state by state pollution laws. I'll show you another one from another vehicle. Okay, here's a... Uh, a Chevy or Pontiac G3 Wave. There is a very tiny catalytic converter there. You can see it. Uh, the other one's a muffler. So this comes right off the mortar. Your first thing goes into the emissions control called the catalytic converter. This uh, determines how much pollution this vehicle will produce. So if it, it was a high producing vehicle of pollution, it would be a bigger one. If the emissions are quite low, these are a smaller one depending on the size of the mortar so that one is very fairly small there might only be worth 30 25 to 30 dollars depending depends how concentrated it is let me see what else i can show you all right everybody cleaning treasure hunter here these are some of the examples of uh silver recovery uh hidden wealth in uh scrap and different uh, materials uh these are plain cds a lot of these cds are uh silver silver plated but it's such a such a small amount it's probably not worth even even to unless you had thousands of them they would start adding up but you know if you have a few hundred i would for, forget that this is off a keyboard all this tracing all that tracing is silver 
pretty well pure silver. It's double sided here, so this is where all the keyboards went. So what I want to show you is these are the breakers. That's standard breaker, house breakers. That's like a 30 amp breaker. It's like a double breaker. This is like a single breaker. But these, this is the breaker itself. Uh, you can't get get into these. They're actually a riveted, so you have to either drill them out or you have to smash them. Ideally, you can put a towel around it and you can break with a hammer. They break real easy. A couple swings is broken. I'll uh, show you. Uh, okay, uh, here's some uh, contacts. Right here, um, as you can see, this this one's really small. See, that's a single pole. See how it's just a very small piece of silver there. But that's like about 90% silver. Um, I looked at this this here. I'm suspecting this being silver too. I did start scratching. I didn't see any copper. But you know you still have to do an acid test. Ideally you can uh, scrape with a file. And put a uh, 14 karat gold test on there. And it will give you an example. If it's copper it will turn, start turning green. If it's plated over copper. But I want to show you some of the higher voltage. Uh, really, uh, uh, higher breakers like the um, the main 100 amp or 200 amp breakers there's a pretty fair big chunk of uh, silver there see as you can see that that little square pad here not the base part I don't think we'd have to test for that but that generally is silver right there 90 percent so here's here's another another version here um, See this one, how I scratched it, you can see it's um, copper, silver over copper. See this one, this contact here is a little thicker than the other one. Pure silver there. So these are the standard house breakers. I want to show you also, this is some sort of relay. Automatic relay. See how there's uh, three, um, three kinds of um, silver in there. Um, it's a two-way switch, so there's um, three little uh, round circle discs of silver on each each contact. So there's actually six six on that one. So open and close, open and close. The contact is silver there. But you got to remember some of these breakers, like these are really old breakers. They're ideally probably not worth. Not worth selling because they're just too outdated. The fuse boxes are from 1960. But having new new breakers are probably worth more than scrapping. So, I, you know, I'm, I suggest scrapping just ones that are really old. Even this relay. If you had to buy this relay, it probably cost you about 10 or $15 minimum. So, you know, you have pros and cons on what you want to do. It gives an example of, of the silver content. And like you say, the higher the, uh, higher the, uh, like industrial, if you have industrial breakers that are like, you know, 500 amp breakers and you have multiple banks, you know, you can have big chunks of, uh, silver in there, makes them more worthy. Also, this is all like silver plates, forks. Um, it's hard to say how much will come off these because depending on how thick the plating is, some of the material could be double or triple, triple plated. Um, any event is you can strip all this by um, reverse electrolysis. Um, you can strip strip all this material off it. You still have a fork that's either copper or brass, which is still worth something. And then you have your silver recovery. Like, you know, one guy was saying they get about a one, a one gram about a gram on average so i mean that that could just be a you know a newer plated like this is old plated probably for the 40s be a lot lot thicker so you know it all depends on you know the wear and all that so that's some of your silver um new age silver that you can recover you know and then i showed you the uh, cali converters which i think that's the best bang for your buck and the breakers are probably pretty decent and this is kind of low end and then I'm not sure how the these ones recover because uh, you know you have to do processes to uh, extract the silver off the I think it's called mylar that stuff 
So we'll move on to some of the gold items here. These are out of computer boards. All these, um, where all the junction points are, they're all gold-plated pins. Everything you see is gold-plated there. Hard to see on film. Uh, these are hard drives. See how the gold plating is on here? And there's other stuff inside here. You can see the pins right there, the gold plated. There's also an uh, aluminum disc here that has platinum on there. Very small amounts of platinum. If you had a thousand of them, you might make some, uh, some weight, but having a few, you know, 50, 100 might not be worth your time. And also, here's another example. These are uh, fingers here, gold fingers, they call them. They're on expansion boards, they were things, they're double-sided. They're like 24 karat gold. And then you have all the gold here and all these, um, where all your cards split in there. And then here's another example. See all the gold plating there? You know, and all these ICs, and all these ICs have very tiny amounts of gold in them. Some of the legs are even gold, but these are all look like they're just metal legs. Uh, you don't know until you start taking them apart, or you have to actually incinerate them and grind them up, and then you almost have to pan them to refine them. Here's some other uh, fingers also. Here's a, a CPU type thing with, with the pins. See all those pins there? They're all like gold plated. These are the most um, you get the most amount of gold of the this style CPU compared to the other ones that are flat boards so you don't get very much these have a lot more gold and I was going to show you these these are uh, a card I'm not sure memory card 32 megabyte but you can see how it's the gold plated pins also again are not played through like fingers there's another version here this is a card slot. We put another card inside it. More fingers. Uh, like for instance here, that's gold plated here. Uh, it's a quarter inch and two, like a one eighth or whatever it's called. But you know, stuff like that, the amount of gold is so, so tiny. It's probably worth more. You probably get two, three dollars for that versus uh, might get maybe what a quarter, maybe gold on there if you're lucky. Also, there's these. Uh, cards you use in um, mobile cell phones you know memory type cards uh, the data cards or whatever they are but uh, they have the gold also and I was going to show you um, even jewelry like gold plated jewelry if you get enough of this jewelry together and you start uh, doing electrolysis or you, or you usually uh, put it in um, hydrochloric acid and they use peroxide and the, a lot of this foil comes off but some of this that method is only good on certain type of foils solid plating you may not penetrate the plating itself so it makes it difficult you have to use different type of acids here are these these chips here they got gold in them and stuff more figure figure joints there also I was going to show you um like you have these floppy disks and you have your hard drives and if you're looking at uh, there's other uh, things that contain silver I forgot what the term is on that one but these contain silver these are like crystal type things they contain silver silver that's gold so the, the, there's lots of gold in here that started the traces right there and you have all your pins here more gold plated pins crystal oscillators you know there's IC chips these have gold in them but you know the most of the gold easy gold is like if you take it from the fingers that's your most easy gold versus uh, these ones you know there's a lot of work and chemicals involved to extract that type of uh, material also, I was looking at here. See how this is just a ink. It's just a, it's a HP ink. But uh, the traces here. See this gold plating here. 
this one's very small, but some inks have the whole back side is all gold on a kind of a mylar, and you can just pull it right off. So basically, what you're doing is most of these materials you have to uh, put them in chemicals and acids, and you have to use other acids to bring out the gold or the silver, the platinum. But um, you know, if, if you come across these materials and you have lots of it, and you accumulate a lot and lot and lot, you could you know get you know small to large amounts of gold depending on how, how many uh, computer boards, hard drives, and you know like a, for instance you know I've been in a demolition business for like 20 years and like I said, I mean um, I could had thousands of these breakers. Especially the old ones, no one takes them out, they just sit there forever. But on the really high-end breakers, the whole thing is silver. Like I'll show you for instance. Yeah, it's a different type, different type here, but the new ones, like I say, um, say for instance here, this whole thing is silver plus, plus the contact. But more like it would be more like this. That leg would be silver and the contact. That's in the high end ones. There's some name brands like Westinghouse and there's a few other ones that are real high end. They're very expensive breakers. You got a lot of silver in them. So you just have to figure out which ones the better ones are. And then um, a lot of these ones, like I say, you have to um, heat them up, heat them with a blowtorch, and the silver falls off. It's just soldered on there. Right? And I noticed, uh, I looked at a couple other ones, some were riveted on, like that. This one is not, that's just a piece of silver there. I was looking at this one here, for instance. See how there's a rivet in there? So you have to somehow uh, drill the rivet out, but also you have a little bit of contamination there. The rivet is bonded into the silver. So in the end result is you have to separate that and then you have to refine it. But uh, these are probably more easy to refine because, you know, the silver is there. Once the solder comes off, it's pretty well 90% pure silver. And also, like I say, you could, you know, when you're looking around junk stores, uh, I showed you a table of uh, silver marks. Um, you'll have like 925 or you'll have British hallmarks. A lot of this stuff, EPNS and stuff, is just all fake stuff. Let your plate nickel silver, you don't want that stuff. But if you know your silver marks, bring yourself a lube. Because a fork like this in silver could be 40, 45 grams of silver. And at, and at 50 cents a gram, right now they're paying 53 cents a gram. You know, you could be looking at 30, 40 dollars just for a piece of a, a fork. Right? 25, 30 dollars just for one fork. It all depends, because it's all, all by weight. If you get enough enough materials together, like I say, you don't have to refine stuff yourself. You can send it to factories that do it for you, or they'll buy stuff. Like fingerboards, I was looking at websites. They usually pay about a hundred dollars for for two kilos. I think a hundred American or something like that. So, but you got to break them down. You got you got basically have to cut them along the line here. You know, you don't know their junk on there. You cut them tight there, and then they do buy them. Like for instance, this fingerboard, like it's got lots here, but it's it's not so big, right? Some are bigger than the others. Some of the higher end boards, like these, this is a thick plating, but not not continuously. So you have to kind of grade. Like this is a good one here. See how it's solid everywhere. All gold plating, but you have to kind of constantly look. And pins, you get high grade pins. If you look at the pins, the uh, the nicer the color, like the, if they're really uh, golden color, like a high carat gold color, you know it's a lot of good plating on there. It's a lot of gold quality. And sometimes you look at gold. Uh, um, there's some gold also. It's flash called flash dawn. It's a very small percentage of gold. It's not even worth refining, basically. It's too complicated. It's almost like it's flashed. 
something similar to that. But this is your actual plating. You'll actually feel. You can feel the gold itself, the plating. There's also like pins here, the gold. You know, there's there's a few tricks on these. These come off, and then you just pull them apart. You pull the pins out. There's a lot of work involved. It's like I say, it's more kind of a hobby type thing. Um, you couldn't really pay anybody an hourly to do this. It's just uh, too time consuming, but at large quantities to grind it all up at factories, to grind it all up and machines separate everything by chemicals. You know, they do big vats in high volume. That's how they can make money, but with wages being so high here in North America, very difficult. But if you come across a lot of stuff as a hobby, you can get free gold, free, free silver, free platinum. So thanks, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, comment, like if you like. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. This is Canadian Treasure Hunter. Thanks for watching.